Um, quite a good little exchange here between Boris and Kier. Um, sidestep Starmer, um, essentially saying everything and nothing at the same time. A good strategy of Kier's is to go after Dominic Cummings, of course. But overall, we still don't know what he thinks. What does Sidestep Starmer really think about anything? Now we learn that while the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are telling the armed forces, police officers, care workers and firefighters that they will get a pay freeze, Dominic Cummings has been handed at least a £40,000 pay rise. How on earth does the Prime Minister justify that? Uh, well, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, he totally trivialises the efforts of the British people uh, in, in, in getting the virus down. He, he says, uh, and, and, and he, he says that, uh, the, the, that none of the measures, none of the lockdown measures uh, have worked. It's absolutely untrue, Mr Speaker. From, uh, from November the 5th to December the 3rd, the people of this country came together once again uh, to get the virus under control, and they may have made a huge amount of progress. We will continue with that tiering system, and uh, we will get that virus down. And that is, the, that is the best way forward for this country. All he wants to do, Mr Speaker, is to lock the whole country down. That's, he's a one-club golfer. That's the only solution he has. And then, and then, Mr Speaker, all he does is attack the economic consequences of lockdowns. Mr. Speaker, you could script that from October and November when he was saying a lockdown is the last thing the country needs disastrous. Two weeks later, he put it on the table and voted for it. Ridiculous. It's exactly the problem what we've got. Not learning from mistakes. And obviously we know about Dominic Cummings. It wasn't performance-related pay, Mr Speaker. But I think the, the British people will find it pretty hard to understand why it's one rule for our key workers and another for his advisers. And it's now likely that the next big mistake will be over the easing of restrictions over Christmas. And this isn't smarmy lawyers. Let me give you the British Medical Journal. The British, British Medical Journal yesterday said this. We believe the government is about to blunder into another major error that will cost many lives. The Prime Minister should listen to that advice, not just ignore it as usual. And if he really is going to press ahead with this, can he tell us what's the assessment and has it been done of the impact that it will have on infection rates and increased pressure on the NHS. What's the impact? Well, Mr Speaker, I wish he'd have the, the, the guts just to say what he really wants to do, which is to, to cancel the plans people have, have made and, and cancel, uh, cancel Christmas. That's really, that's what it, I think that's what he's driving at, Mr Speaker. Uh, he's, look, uh, he's looking a bit blank. Uh, I think that's what he's driving at. But I can tell him that as of today and just, uh, just, uh, just this morning, there is actually, as I say, unanimous agreement across all the uh, UK government, across all the devolved administrations, uh, including members of all parties, Mr Speaker, including uh, his own, that we should proceed uh, in principle with the existing uh, regulations, uh, Mr Speaker, because we don't want to criminalise people's long-made plans, Mr Speaker, but we do think, we do think it's absolutely vital that people should, at this very, very tricky time, exercise a high degree of personal responsibility, especially when they come into contact uh, with elderly people and avoid uh, contact with elderly people uh, wherever possible. And that is how, that is how, by being sensible and cautious, not by imposing endless lockdowns or cancelling Christmas, as he would appear to want to do. That, well, that's the only implication I can draw from what he said, Mr Speaker, unless he wants to announce some other idea. That is the way we will continue to work together to keep this virus under control, to defeat it and take the country